Hello guys and welcome to our latest video. Today it's a tutorial and I'm bringing to you uh, this superstar gentleman. So we had Matteo in the previous one who was beautiful. We have this superstar Swiss gentleman. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> That's your introduction. But basically today we're going to be talking about something different. So we want to transport our way of doing images into a uh, emotion. And we are going to show you guys how to create very quick, simple and easy motion graph. Now, motion graph, Timon, explain to the lovely so people. Basically, it's like a, um, a cinema graph. So we're showing mm. some examples on screen. Um, it's animating a still image, basically, in a really simple way. So it's it kind of, it's not very an animation. It's, it's still like a still image, but we just animate some elements. Yeah. It's, it's an animated photo, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And this, I mean, the power of this is to really focus and add that motion, right? Architecture is such a still element, but we can really create some interesting um, different types of ideas. And I hope this inspires you and gives you kind of the base to, to really do something for yourself. So before then, let's talk a little bit about the news, what's going on and a couple of things that have gone on in the studio. But remember, you can always skip ahead uh, to the time code and just jump straight to the tutorial if you want to. Um, for those of you who follow, uh, we've, we've basically did our first meetup. And for those of you who are also more attentive, saw in the end of the last video, we put this as a kind of a little test. So that went fantastic. We had an amazing time and we managed to get a beautiful group of people together. It was about 20 of yeah, us or something. It, it was amazing meeting you guys, some of you guys, and uh, had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was amazing. And we're, we're going to link below our meetup group. And I guarantee you guys, we're going to do this again. And probably at the moment looking like January, February, something like that. On another note, and I think a very happy note, we're also looking to grow our team a little bit more. So we have positions open for both juniors and also mid-level, mid-weight. So if you're really into Photoshop, you understand 3D and you kind of live here already in the UK, unfortunately for for many others, uh, we're looking for you and don't be afraid. You can send it, doesn't mean you can't send it later on as well. Okay, so let's get cracking. Uh, I'm gonna have Timon here from our team uh, help me out. Well, sure, he's so gonna show you guys basically. <laughs> let's do this, man. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. So welcome back guys. And as you can see on screen, we have our cinemagraph and this was shot with a drone uh, in Portugal and it's a uh, top down view. And it's, I mean, we've had this for a year in the making. These are the various phases that we're going to talk through and we're going to start off with. As you can see, we start with our base plate. Uh, then we had our sketch and we really started to build this up as best we could into this final product. So let's start off with our sketch, our first sketch. And the first sketch is really what's gonna kind of create everything. It's the base to start off with. And um, this is where we started to discuss a little bit of the ideas, discuss also a little bit of the various design elements as this was a design from an old studio I worked at, link down below. Uh, I really thought we could, we could define a couple of the volumes. Um, this came direct from SketchUp, again, I'm not, going to go too much into the 3D as you guys know. Everything is very simple, very um, elementary. So we use 3D Studio Max and Corona Render and we basically just use Corona materials and that was already, um, that was one of the big things we used to actually um, start off. You guys can see that we have that uh, previous uh, uh, tutorial in the description that also might help with a lot of these 3D elements. But as you can see, it's just building into the model these main design elements that are really important and really just kicking this off, really trying to understand the design through the 3D from the sketch we have, which is, of course, always a base. So we're just working into our model, giving the basic materials uh, through Corona, which they have their Corona library. And the next step, and one of the big things is also to simplify the geometry to match. Again, we've, we've had to match two things, right? So we, we have the landscape down below and we have the architecture and we want it to fit uh, the basic frame. So we've just grabbed a frame texture kind of mapped it on top, just easy mapping and just distorted a little bit of the, um, a little bit of the vertices to fit more or less the height and what the, the actual frame is doing. So that base frame that we've projected from the drone and we've saved out a frame. The, the main thing we all do in, in 3D models is just refine 
slightly that 3D model. As you can see, I'm already testing around with cameras. Uh, now, why do we want to also have this base plate and we want to have this idea? So we want to have this so we can also get the shadows correct. So as you see, I'm distorting, uh, I've distorted, um, I've distorted the, the base of it. And that is to also grab the shadows so that when we overlay the shadow pass uh, in post-production and then uh, going ahead in Adobe, uh, Adobe After Effects, sorry, we start to get that distortion. We understand the heights and how far on top of it is. I've also added a little bit of, um, of displacement to, to the base plate. So that base plate has the displacement and you can add the AO and it starts to get that grit, grittiness. As you can see, the render has a little bit of that grittiness and we're just going to mix that up through the various uh, colors and passes and transport that into Photoshop. So this is the phase we get at Photoshop and we kick things off. So we've got our basic plate all rendered up and you can see the various phases it's already gone through. And this is really one of the fun things because if we can do this in post-production, get the mood, get the feeling, get everything ready, we can transport these layers into After Effects where Timon from our team is going to go into it. As you guys know, this comes from a previous project, the Illustrating an Architectural Plan, that we also have up on YouTube and you guys can check it out and get a little more information on different other aspects that we've done and worked into. So as you can see, we have the base plate uh, from the camera drone. And from this, it's a kind of a simulation, really, before we get into uh, Adobe After Effects, where we start to bring in the layers, we start to match the actual render to the plate, and we start to figure out what are the tricks and what are the things that are going to go wrong here. And we really need to understand how we integrate these things. So as you can see, uh, I've gone around and basically started masking off even the shadows, overlaying that, multiplying it, bringing it in slowly. So you start to see the base plate is now merging with the actual, um, the actual render. Now, as you guys know, uh, important to use wire color passes, uh, also important to use your color balance, your levels. There is always two things to keep in mind, right? It's your, your values uh, the, uh, and your and also the colors that you use and really match those two main things. So your values, your black and white, and then the colors that you want to match up. So as you guys can see, we're working our way through the file and we've got everything more or less matched up. Now, one of the big things is also the, the grade and understanding just, you know, how much of the grade we want to do, how do we want it to look? And the grade is always such a I think for us, especially here at Arc9, such an important element because we we do use a lot of the colors and uh, and and we are kind of well known for that. The, the colors that we use and how we mix and match them together and the harmonies that we use. Again, I'm adding in that grit and that dirt that kind of accumulates. Again, we could have used animated people. Uh, we were a bit lazy. We just wanted to do something really simple to show you guys. Um, but we could have added animated people on top of this uh, in, in After Effects. I mean, we're adding clouds. I think the clouds really give um, a certain aspect and scale. Um, you guys can see also scale is quite important. Um, I think the scale is a little bit off of the base plate. At the moment, uh, it just looks like the, the, the plants are maybe a bit too, too big. Uh, which make the architecture look a bit weird. But anyway, I think we could get away with it for now. As you guys can see, I'm working into uh, the, the top adjustment. So look, looking to curve, to color balance, uh, understanding, getting that filmic look. And again, if you guys slow this down, you can really see what I'm doing, and how I'm working into it. And again, it's not really about the technique. And uh, I don't think any of our tutorials are so much about technique, but it is about um, uh, kind of having that intuitive feeling for the image through the color balance, your curves, um, and so forth. And again, just you know, small details, that rock piling up above, lifting up that black so we can have that real filmic look that if you actually pause a film and you look, nothing is 100% black. It's kind of this lifted black. It's not really um, so much, you know, going into the 100%. So we're nearing now our final aspect and everything is more or less there. Again, you, I think you can see the simplicity. Now just small details like that pool, what, you know, maybe we overlay a pool texture or something like that, um, just to get an idea. 
uh, Timon is going to kind of get into this now with the Adobe After Effects now that we've set um, the base plate. And again, it's always teamwork, right? So this is the basic steel. And now I'm going to leave you with Mr. Timon into the animation compositing part. All right, guys, so for the compositing today, um, before we go into the After Effects, I'm just going to speak about how to create this uh, alpha mask we're going to use for um, for masking the villa or the elements you want to animate later on. So seeing this image, I, um, I decided to mask the villa out and also animate um, a sky reflection in the glass and water moving in the pool. So. These are the masks we want to create. So just using the wire color mask uh, pass, I mean, from the 3D, we're going to select these elements and create this alpha alpha mask, as you can see. It's, it's really super simple, like it's simply um, selecting with the one tool and then filling uh, a black background with the white element uh, we want to, to keep and just saving that. So that's how you create your masks. So it's much simpler actually to get these out of Photoshop. I know you can do all these Luma masks in Adobe After Effects, yeah, but they're exactly. much simpler. No, this is actually, we're going to use this for uh, the Luma masks, but you could mark that with a pen tool on After Effects, but it would take ages and would then be precise, like as precise as this. So yeah. Yeah, and that's why we started that's why everything we're doing off. This way. Exactly. And another um, mask, not really a mask, but a pass we want to use later on is this shadow, because we, we are going to use it to ground the villa with the plate to make it look more realistic. So to do this, I simply took the diffuse pass, played a bit uh, with it, with the curves, simply to try to eliminate the gray. We really want like black uh, and white values in there. So we can multiply it. So we can multiply it, ex exactly. Now I'm just kind of removing, um, like painting out what I don't want to see. So for example, the, the sea or too much of the cliffs. We are really trying to keep what's around the villa and under the villa mainly. So again, just going into this, this is very simple techniques. What we're kind of trying to show you is an overview of the process. And if you kind of look at the screen, it's nearly all there. But, you know, a lot of people ask us to really simplify. In this case, Timon, um, just, yeah, continue going with it. So this is what we are going to use, all our elements. So you see we have our alpha masks, the shadow layer, our post-produce visual we just did in Photoshop, the uh, road-run footage, of course, and some footage animated. Like, uh, again, I said this up to you guys, but I decided to use the sky and some water. So here we are in After Effects. Just create a new new sequence, new scene with whatever adjustment and settings you want. I just went with the basic 19, 1920 by 1080. And we're gonna start by just placing our world run footage and uh, try to match uh, what we did in post-production. So I just here, for example, flipped it around because we flipped it in the, in the PSD when we were doing the still. So here we go. And you add on top the post-produced image. So now we are going to, to place the post-produced visual on top of our um, raw footage. So to mask it, this is how we're going to do it. So you, we have all this alpha masks we created, right? So you simply drag along your alpha uh, on top of the, the footage you, you want to mask and use this Luma right there and select your alpha mask. And it's going to straight away mask it perfectly according to your alpha mask. And the great thing with this technique is you can use this uh, mask with everything. So it also works with, for example, adjustments layer, as you can see on screen, which means you can make special effects for only that will only affect your um, your mask. Um, I mean, this is just like Photoshop, uh, the power exactly. of masking, but with movement and that, you know, that fourth dimension that you really get Definitely. time and space. Uh, After Effects works uh, in a lot of similar ways than Photoshop. It's just a different interface, but it's yeah. basically the same way of thinking. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've used it quite a bit, but I, I yeah, it, it's great, but it can get complex. And I know we had a very complex version of this tutorial Yeah, yeah. before. So now that we have our um, villa on top of our footage, I'm going to place the shadows. So we have our shadow um, shadow mask that we saved from before. And we are simply going to match the scale and multiply it, change this mode to multiply to match completely um, the shadow under the villa. And you can see you already have a really good example of a cinema graph that's already quite working. Now all, all we need to do is add some more animation if, if we want to or not, and then grade it. 
So now it's exactly the same way. Uh, place your footage that you want to, to animate. So for example, here is the sky and sim simply then uh, mask it using the alpha mask uh, you created for it. Here, it's a simple trick. I kind of sped it up to get some sort of more time-lapse effect. So the clouds are moving faster and we can see more of the animation. So it's a bit cheating the re reality of things, but it looks a lot better as a, as a visual. Definitely, and it adds more vibrancy and adds quite a bit more life. Exactly, yeah. 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 And it's just another, I mean, this is, this is the great thing about a cinemagraph as well. You can kind of cheat reality in that it doesn't have, it can look like an actual video just with simple things. And um, you, know, we, you did quite a bit of things here when, when you animated it. And I think this was, you know, it's the small, it's always the small touches, like 80% of the I visual is quick, but. It's a subtlety in, um, in what you create are often what brings it to life a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, it's what is it? You can do 80% of this in 20% of the whole time, but then it's that 20% that gives, that 20% that's left that takes that long time yeah, yeah, and, and exactly. gives that extra life, right? Exactly, exactly. And now we're going to use the exact same technique we did uh, for our glass, but for the pool. So simply placing your footage, your raw footage of what you want to animate and mask it with your alpha mask you created for it. And we are almost there. Um, now the last thing we have to do is grade it to match what we had on the on the steel we created. So we had a nice mood we liked with light, um, deep blues. And instead of wasting time using um, Lumetri or any other adjustments to match the color, colorimetry, you can simply just reuse your steel on top, match the scale, and change this mode to color mode, and it's going to match um, what you had on your steel. Now you can still keep on going, adding more clouds, more birds, more effects or anything you want in there. But you already have something quite convincing and we want to keep it really simple for this tutorial that is already quite advanced. So here you go. So guys, here we are again. I hope you enjoyed it. Do not forget to hit that like, subscribe, and now what everyone's saying, the, the bell. The bell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important. We'll put a beep in there. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> but basically, uh, yeah, uh, just um, keep following our stuff, come up with ideas. We have um, some new ideas that are coming soon. So we've already prepped a video, and I hope you guys enjoy that. So seeing these mics might give you a little bit of an idea. Thank yeah. you for your time. Um, don't forget to support the channel. Visit Arky9Learn, Arky9.com, which is our studio. Hit the bell and enjoy. And I hope you guys enjoy this. And um, yeah, don't forget. Do it in post. <laughs> <laughs>